morning everyone and welcome to our worship from St Hilda's Rectory. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In today's Gospel reading we hear how Jesus gives his disciples a new commandment to love one another as he has loved them. Love is a concept that is very easy to talk about and is probably the number one topic of most songs. But talking and singing isn't the same as doing. Love is more than a warm feeling or the buying and receiving of, of gifts or the desire to be with someone. Jesus proves his love for his disciples in numerous ways from taking the time and effort to teach them, to praying for them, to washing their feet, to inspiring them with continuing his mission that he has started. Love is multi-dimensional. It includes working hard so that others may learn and grow and benefit from the wisdom and knowledge that we are able to pass on. It might mean praying for someone to know God's goodness in their life. It could be listening to someone's story, their worries, their dreams. Love can be shown in very practical ways, offering to go shopping for someone or collect their prescription or their children from school. Our first hymn today picks up on the words from St John's Gospel. Let's sing it together. A new commandment I give unto you.
Let's light the candle for today's service. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. A light, light no darkness, darkness can quench. Let's pause and ask God to send his light and hope into our hearts, into our homes and out into our world. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom, to whom all hearts, hearts are open, open all desires known, and, and from, from whom those no secrets are hidden, hidden. cleanse, cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the tomb, sometimes we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, Sometimes we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, sometimes we are slow to believe. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for today. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Good morning, everybody. This is a reading from St. John's Gospel, chapter 13, there from verse 31. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where am I going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. Hello everyone. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter but our gospel reading comes from the events we marked a few weeks ago on Monday Thursday. In John's version of the story of Jesus he has just washed the disciples' feet, and the door has literally just closed on Judas as he leaves the group to do what he has to do for the scripture to be fulfilled. Turning to the remaining disciples, as soon as Judas has left, Jesus' immediate concern is not to speak of betrayal, but of love. His overriding desire at this pivotal moment in the Easter story, where the cross now looms large, is to demonstrate the extent that this love must reach. He talks about being glorified and about God being glorified in him. In John's language, Jesus is speaking here about the cross that awaits him the following day. He is preparing the disciples for his imminent departure and leaving them the instruction, the command, to love one another. But this love is to be deep and far-reaching. 
extending from the mundane to the sacrificial. In washing the disciples' feet, Jesus has demonstrated that loving each other begins in the menial tasks we are prepared to carry out for one another and reaches to the very point of giving one life for another. From the ball and towel to the cross, Jesus embodies the extent of this divine love and gives us the perfect example, the perfect representation of what the human translation of that divine love means for the relationships we have with each other. We are to love one another as Jesus has loved us. From servant through suffering to sacrifice, this unconditional love is what we are commanded to live up to. The history of humanity since the time of Jesus clearly demonstrates just how far we fall short of the mark in our calling of mutual love. We only have to look at the inequalities and injustices across the world, and even closer to home, to see just how much we struggle to love each other on all sorts of levels. Without this love for each other, we cannot love Jesus fully. It is not possible to say that we love our Lord and speak, act or think in ways that don't demonstrate that same love to our neighbour. Perhaps this kind of love, this way of thinking about putting others' needs before those of ourselves and those closest to us, isn't in our human nature. You only have to look at what happened with toilet rolls and dried pasta in the first lockdown to see how far we put ourselves from this perfect, unselfish, sacrificial love that Jesus speaks of and commands us to replicate. Perhaps Jesus understands our human nature and this is why it was so important for him to give this specific commandment to his disciples and why it is so important for us to be regularly reminded of it through the words of scripture, the liturgy of our worship and the sacrificial poignancy of the sacraments. It can be easy to forget it can be easy to slip up and let our human nature, our protective and selfish instincts, get the better of us. In moments of weakness or stress, we can lose sight of what it means to love others unconditionally, from the smallest of circumstances to the biggest of life's challenges. We can misunderstand or misremember what the nature of this love requires of us and how it should manifest itself in all the aspects of our lives. To understand just what this love is like and what it requires of us, we have the benefit of the advice St Paul gave to the church he founded in Corinth from his first letter to the faithful there. In talking to them about the need for community, the harmony of its many members but the same body, its many gifts but guided by the same spirit, he tells them about a better way of living, where all is lost if love is absent. He says our words are meaningless if we have no love. All our gifts and all our knowledge are worthless if we don't have love. If we give all we have, even our very selves, but not out of love, then it doesn't help us. Love is great-hearted. It is kind. It is not jealous and makes no fuss. It is not puffed up and has no shameful ways. It never forces its claim and doesn't rage or bear a grudge. It doesn't cheer when others are harmed but it rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. It never fails. We are given the gift of faith, the gift of hope, and the gift of love. And of these three, love is the greatest, and we are to pursue it. Remember going back to John's Gospel, that Jesus carried out his acts of love while knowing what would come to pass. He washed the feet of Judas, knowing that only a short time later he would betray his master. He went to the cross, knowing that Peter would deny him, and that the disciples would flee and lock themselves away out of selfish fear. The love Jesus bears for us takes no account of whether we are worthy to receive it, because at some level each of us has our failures and our fears, and it is that unconditional and far-reaching love that we are called to have for each other. All too often, personal interests seem to trump the common good, and those who seek compassion, understanding and acceptance sometimes seem only to find judgment and rejection instead. 
But Jesus could not be any clearer. It is not by how pious we are, by how faithfully we attend church and say the prayers and sing the hymns, not by how much we learn about our faith that we are marked as Jesus' disciples, but by how much we love. It is only our acts of service and sacrifice that point to the love of God for the world made known in Jesus Christ. As a reading we have in church from the Acts of the Apostles points us to, God's gift of grace is for all people, and we must therefore love all people. There is no other commandment greater than this. Amen. This morning's intercessions are in the form of a litany, and in these days of continuing international tension, begin with a prayer for our armed forces. Holy God, the protector of all who trust in you, grant it to the armed forces of the Crown, as they go about their work, the assurance of your presence, the knowledge of your love, and the guidance of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring healing and wholeness to the world, our people and nation, and let your mercy rule all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with all who defend your truth and your peace, that they may dispel injustice and wrong. Give wisdom to leaders and commanders, that there may be a force for good on the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your wisdom, embrace our enemies and those who wish us harm, and turn their hearts towards constructive reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with medics, chaplains, priests, and all who support the suffering. Give them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all worried families, especially those who have been compelled to leave their homes in the Ukraine and who, together with their loved ones, may be in danger. Surround them with your love and protect them from harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with the sick and wounded. Stand by all prisoners and captives and let your mercy and your power to heal and save be shown to all. We pray for our Queen as she approaches the 70th anniversary of her accession. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive all those who have died, whether or not as a result of hostilities, Surround their loved ones with compassion and give them a patient faith. Establish your love in our hearts that justice may prevail on the earth and all peoples rejoice in your peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead, and lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Few notices for this coming week. Christian Aid Week begins on the 15th of May for a week. On Friday evening, St Hilda's will be hosting a quiz to raise money for Christian Aid. Tickets are £5 for adults and £2 for children. If you would like to come along, please let me know. Advance notice that our APCM, our annual meeting, will be held on Sunday the 22nd of May and this is the meeting where we appoint our church wardens and PCC members. Another advance notice is that I will be starting confirmation classes at the beginning of June for anyone who would like to be confirmed or for those who would just like to learn a little bit more about the Christian faith. If you'd like to join in with that group, again, just get in touch and I'll give you more details. Uh, birthdays, there are no birthdays that I know of um, this week, but if it happens to be your birthday, then I do hope that you have a lovely day. Let's ask for God's blessing on us all. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Our final hymn is Lights Abode, Celestial Salem. <laughs> 